All right, hi everyone. Recently on Twitter, I showed a demonstration where you can basically draw light in cycles using the curve tool. Just to give you a demonstration, if I turn some of these objects off, if I click to draw using the curve tool here, it will create a line of light and that will be reflected in the object. So how do we do this? And also, how can we control it so we can get it drawing around different areas? Well, that's what I'm going to show you today. And we're going to go over things like how to get the pattern inside of the light and how to make it fade over a distance as well. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing I have here is a pretty cool looking scene, actually. It's got a sphere with one of my imperfection materials on it. And what I mean by that is if I click on it, you'll be able to see there's a node group in here called Imperfection Layers. This comes from my procedural patterns bag, which you can pick up if you want to. And it's just plugged into the roughness, and that's giving us this kind of nice inconsistent imperfection over the surface. And I've got two curve-based objects surrounding it. So you can make curve objects by going to Shift A, then down to Curve and choosing from these. I'm assuming you're familiar with curves, but if you're not, then I'll just make one quickly and it will make a curve object in the scene. If we go to the Object Data Properties tab down here, we can find the Geometry section. Under here, there's a value called Depth, and if we scroll that up, we can give it some thickness. And then in Edit Mode, if I go over to the Move tool, we can choose these handles and move them around. So curves are a way for us to generate a procedural geometric curve, which is self-explanatory, in the scene, and we can give curves materials. So it makes it handy if you're doing like emissive tests where Say for example, I made a new material, I'm gonna call it line and gave it some emission. So if I give it an emission color and turn the emission strength up, it's now a creative curve, a lighting source. So it's going to react with everything in the scene. And we can see that in the reflection of the object there. So this is basically the fundamental principle for how we're gonna get that line drawing effect. So clicking on this curve circle here, I'm going to give it the material, which is the line, the material that I just created for demonstration purposes. So it's just a principled BSDF shader with the emission color on white and the strength up to something fairly high. We'll, we'll put it on 100 just to round it up. And you can see that the light is affecting the surface of the object there. So if I click on it, because the origin is at the center, if I double tap R, I can gimbal rotate it around and you'll see that the light is changing how it's affecting the sphere. Okay, that's fine. So how are we going to make this more creative? Well, the first thing I want to do is give the light a pattern Pattern, so it's inconsistent to get that kind of pencil like effect. First thing I'm going to do is make a texture coordinate node because this is always important when doing kind of procedurally generated patterns. Then I'm going to need to create some kind of texture to use as the pattern. You could use like anything you like. There's a variety of generated noise textures. I'm going to end up using a custom one of mine, but before we do that, maybe I'll just demonstrate the Voronoi and then let's plug the object vector coordinate in and then pass this for a color ramp. So we're restricting the values color in. And maybe let's put this to the alpha at the bottom there and then drag these values up and you'll see that parts of the line are now disappearing. So it's now an inconsistent line and some of you might look at that and think, wow, that's a cool effect. Yeah, because look, yeah, you're already getting a nice different reflection. Actually, this reflection in the surface reminds me of like, you know, Star Wars Imperial Corridors. You know what I mean? Like they've got that kind of repeating white line pattern. So even with something as basic as that, you can already start experimenting with different things. And of course, we can change the scale up as well in the generated texture. And this is going to start giving us like a similar effect where if we take a look closer at the surface of the line there, it's kind of broken up and inconsistent. This looks even more cool when you've rendered it out and if you add like a glare effect in the compositor because it'll be bleeding out from that line. Maybe I'll do that quickly now with like a low sample value. Let's take a look. So here we go, I've rendered it out and you can see that with the glare going on that the bloom is kind of inconsistent which adds to the effect and I think that looks really nice. So also just to show you the compositor nodes there, this is what it looks like in case you wanted to copy that down. Okay, so I'm not actually going to use the Voronoi, I'm going to use one of my own from the procedural patterns pack. I'm going to use the cool stick one plug the object coordinate in there, give it a scale of about 2.3 and a detail of 0.517 and then plug that into our color ramp. So the black value is essentially going to be my main controller for how pencil like I want it to be or how broken up I want it to be. So as I drag that back and forth, we're getting a very nice disruptive pattern there. Okay, so to stay organized, I'm going to collect these two together into a frame and call that the uh, mask for the light pattern. Okay, nice. Let's drag those in. Okay, so the next effect we're going to do is something you saw in the original result, which was to take that curve object and have it fade on a gradient. Now, I'm not particularly great at vector math, but I know generally what to play with to try and get the result I'm looking for. So I'll give you a demonstration here. We're going to need vector coordinates to tell the shader which way to fade on a gradient. And this is also where a lot of personal preference comes in, because to compose your own directions and rotations for this, you can use your own collection of nodes. I'm just going to play with a generated vector coordinate here. So if I drag that out and type in vector rotate, then we have this axis angle. Angle. Then I'm going to set up a color ramp, just like before, and plug that in. So if I plug the color into the alpha, now we'll be able to see the result. Now if I adjust this angle value, when we get it high enough, you'll be able to see that ring start to fade. 
the interesting thing here is that if we change the axis, so if I set it to 1, 0, 0 instead of 0, 0, 1, it's going to change the direction there. So if you generally imagine it as the axis being like an x, y, and z direction, only put them to 0 and 1 because it seems to be a normalized value, then that's going to change the direction that the gradient is going to happen. Another thing to keep in mind here is that what we're doing is local. So as we rotate the object around, the vector information we're using is relative to the local axis of that object. So if you get the gradient going exactly how you want it, you can just rotate the curve around and position it into a different way to get the exact look that you're looking for. Now another thing I can do is take the white value here and turn that down if I wanted to fade it even more. So then I can keep duplicating these and make a load of these for a different artistic effect. But you might look at that and think, okay, that looks kind of cool, but is there a way we can maintain the light from these while having it faded on an opacity? And yes, you can do that. I have a very dirty way of doing it with the light path node, and I might show you that in a bit. But for now, we're going to move on to coloring. So we've got a bunch of circle curves going around here, but they're all white. How do we color them? Before we move on to that, let me just frame this up. Now to add color to the light, you guessed it, we're going to add a ramp. And then we're going to take the alpha color value and plug that in. Then let's add a few colors. So let me do blue, and then I'll do like a, a green, and then let me plug that into the emission color. One thing you're going to notice here is that if I bring the green value right up, we're going to get both blue and greens present on the object. More so if I bring the brightness of the alpha mask up. So let's keep that on pure white down there, and then let me drag the green back. So now we have green on the higher areas and blue on the lower ones. So if I get really tight with this, then we can get an interesting combination of colors like that. But for the sake of keeping it in my style, I'm going to go back to my kind of regular colors. So there we go. And depending on how you set up this vector information, that's going to change how it looks. So I actually don't typically like using the vector rotate node. I've only actually kind of really used it because it's kind of what you're supposed to use for doing rotational things, but let's get rid of it because I hate it. So we're going to do things the dirty way. So I'm going to add a mapping node. Let's add that in. Plug the generated in. Turn this to a vector mode, plug that in. Let's do about 65 degrees on that rotation and move the black up a bit. There we go. F tradition, we're doing this for artwork. So now if I scrub this back and forth, we get a nice wider, much better gradient for the colors there. So we can grow this around the object. We can also adjust the rotational values here. And again, you'll need to play around with these to see exactly how it will work, but just play around until you get something that looks nice. I think that's cool. It's like some kind of light hand coming around to grab the object. And I also like the stark contrast between the colors and the grayscale object in the background. Okay, so let's reintroduce our pattern into this equation. The way we're going to do this is with a mix RGB node. And essentially, we're going to take our current alpha mask and we want to remove the pattern from it because it's a black and white mask. We're essentially going to cut out the empty spaces from the pattern. So to do this, we're going to use the darken mode. Set the factor all the way up because we want to darken the mask with our pattern. So if I plug that into color two, so just to clarify that alpha mask to color one, uh, the pattern mask to color two, and then plug that into our alpha. And now they're going to be combined. So as you can see, we have the light grasping around the object, but it still has that kind of pencil like disruptive pattern. Then we can, of course, up our emission strength to make it even brighter to present more light onto the object. And then if you want, we can actually stop here and make another render and see how this looks. So here we go, we're getting a bit of bloom. I would actually like some more bloom, but we can actually change this in the compositor. If I come on over, let's take a look and turn that up. There we go. So look at that. It's got a kind of like alien-esque vibe. Very pretty. But of course, we're not done yet. So let's go back to our scene. And I'm just going to frame these up as well so we know what we're dealing with. I'll name this one Pattern Plus Alpha. And I'll name this one Coloring the Light. Okay, so now we've got this material set up, I'm going to apply it to my other cube curve. So if I put that line there, we now have it going around the outside as well. But you know what, now I'm looking at it, I'm thinking it's a bit overbearing. Having the extra pattern on there is maybe a bit too much. First of all, let me see what it looks like without the pattern. So let me just completely override that. Kind of looks cooler, it's a bit more consistent. Uh, what about without? That's also pretty cool as well because I feel like the object just stands on its own. Um, but since we're going to do the curve drawing demonstration now, I want to leave some space on the object for reflectivity. So I'm going to disable the cube actually, I think that'd be better for demonstration. Okay, so in the solid view, our scene actually looks like this because the physical existence of the curves is still there. We're just hiding parts of it using the shader nodes. To do the drawing, we will first of all need to make a curve object to actually like draw with. So I'm going to shift right click on the ground somewhere here and then press shift A, make a curve, bezier, and we're going to move it up. If I hold to go into edit mode and if I have the move selected, I'm going to double tap A to make sure they're all chosen, press delete and then vertices so we have nothing here. Then we're going to click on the draw tool down here and if I click and drag, it's going to create new curve material. 
So I'm just going to make one tiny one here just so we can check that out. Uh, we'll then go into the object data properties down to depth and increase the thickness of that. So we have some physical existence of the curve in the scene. So if I go into the rendered view and disable the overlays, we can see the curve there. If I click and drag around, we can add more. Scribble, 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 whatever, let me remove those. But I've still got the curve object selected. So if I go to the material properties, then I'm going to add our line material. So now we can essentially draw using that material. If I go back to the camera view here, that means that technically if I scribble around the object here, you'll be able to see some of the reflection coming off of it. So let me write my name and then we get a reflection. So that's essentially how you draw using light, using the curves and the shader nodes. And again, because it's all procedural, we can come back, adjust these values and make part of that drawing disappear or even change the colors. And you'll notice that as we adjust these values, the lighting on the object also changes. So you have a lot of control in getting artistic effects with this. A lot of control over color, the light properties, etc. Okay, so we're all about doing things the wrong way <laughs> and getting cool effects. So earlier I alluded to the question of how can you fade the objects while maintaining their light output? And we're going to up the emission strength to 500 because we're going to check that out now. I'm going to go back into object mode for now just to be safe. Actually, that little bit on the edge is annoying me. So let me edit mode, move, deselect all, select that, delete those. Object mode. Sorry about that. Okay, this next bit of the video is where math experts in the Blender community are going to scream profanities at me through the, uh, through the screen. So we want to maintain the emission strength, which is this value here, while adjusting the alpha of our curves. But we don't want to ruin everything we've already built. Let's make a light path node. Then we're going to make a math node and we're going to set this to greater than. I'm also going to make another one which is less than. I'm going to put the threshold for that on zero and one. The value that we're going to use is the is camera ray value. Now the reason for this is because if we plug this straight in we have a pure white alpha value. Essentially this is a boolean value that says if the camera ray is hitting it then it's true. If the camera ray is not hitting it then it's false. So if I plug this into the less than and then plug that into the alpha what happens is we can no longer see any of the curves however because we've disabled our custom pattern, it means that light from everywhere along the curve is now projecting onto the object. If I plug this into the greater than and apply that there, then the opposite of that is happening, which is where we can see all of the curves, but we're not getting any light from them. So we have two incorrect results here, and they are the complete opposites of each other. We can see the curves, but there's no light. We can't see the curves, but there's all of the light. Okay, now using my stupid mask brain logic, I look at this and I think, okay, this is a white on black mask. So how do I usually control that? One thing I usually do is kind of multiply just to kind of reduce the strength of it. So I guess why not? I'll plug the value in and then I'll use that as our alpha. What happens if I reduce the multiplication? Okay, yeah, we can kind of make it fade a bit, but it's like we need a tiny value and it just kind of turns off and on. That's not what we want. So somewhere in between zero and 0 0.01, is what I want, like I kind of want a gradient between those two. Okay, so what would happen if I took 0 0.001 and then multiplied that by <laughs> by something else and then use that as the value? Like, is that gonna get what I want? Actually, yeah, it kind of does. Huh, that's interesting. We can now control this in a more finite way. Okay, so we now know how to kind of fade our is camera ray mask but we're obviously not considering the pattern we've already made. So I don't know, let's make a mix RGB node again and do the same thing we did before, which is darken. But this time I'll guess we'll use this mask as our factor and we're gonna plug that color in and then plug that into the alpha. And huh, I guess that's working. What happens if I turn that value down? Nothing, nothing at all. What if I turn that to black and then try it? Hmm, it's not working. Oh, but hang on, we're kind of getting it. If I go to about 0 0.2 to 0. 3 I think. Okay interesting so we just need to be careful of that value there. So as you can see here if I play with the values correctly then we can fade the look of the curve objects while maintaining the light output. But you just have to be extremely extremely precise with the values because this isn't a traditional mask and this is like a very very hacky way of doing it. So maybe 262 or something like that. Now the obvious solution here might be to use something like a map range node and then use that to restrict the values and give yourself like a nice control between the gradient. But I think that'll do as a really bad demonstration of how to use it. It's not actually exactly the same as how I did it in my demonstration, but what I actually ended up doing was just making a custom node group which just acted as a slider between values. So a way to do that is to turn a mix RGB node into a node group. Let's 
get rid of these values for now. Just keep the factor, I'll name that value, plug that into the output. And essentially you have a minimum and maximum control for what the value can be. And it just becomes a value slider between those two values. So for example, if I actually take this demonstration, 0.2 to 0.3, Go into the node settings 0.2 to 0.3 then if i change that then we have a value between those two so you'd think this would work um kind of anyway that's probably super confusing don't worry about it just ignore that for now that's our node group for now for getting this interesting effect if we go back and select the curve go into edit mode make sure we've got the draw selected we can now keep scribbling around the object and seeing more of that faded pencil effect happening so i can scribble all over the place here and make it look like someone's scribbling around but the light is actually affecting it okay let's delete some of those and let's also turn that alpha back up so we can see it a bit easier. So what about controlling where we're drawing around the object? We see the thing about this draw mode for the 3D cursor is that it's kind of done in a planar way because at the top where we've got the cursor selected, it means if I shift right click to add the cursor, imagine there's a plane coming out from the camera and we're essentially drawing on that plane exactly where the cursor is. So if you keep that in mind, this is actually where it's quite handy to have a light or shadow catcher object here because we can place the cursor on that scribble around and kind of add things around it that way. There is another way to project this and that's by using the surface mode. Um, this isn't as good because you can kind of intersect with the object a bit. I mean you might find this cool here because it's trying to intersect with the curve object as well. So that's actually a little uh, tip for getting some fancy cable like effects in a scene. Maybe we could use that for another tutorial. So maybe you might actually like that for something but it's not really appropriate for what we're doing. I wonder actually can I do something cool with that using a metallic material? Hang on, I haven't actually tried this before, but you know how we like improv in our tutorials sometimes. I just kind of wanted to see what that would look like if I made it metallic. Let me go back to that curve line, make it even more present. Going to reduce the pattern effect a bit and the gradient. Interesting. Anyway, I'll stop experimenting now. So that's been a general demonstration of how to control emissive lighting on curves and then use them as a tool for drawing light around an object. So hopefully you found it interesting, hopefully it wasn't too chaotic. Keep in mind there are much cleaner ways of doing pretty much everything I've shown you today. But that's okay, remember it's our policy to make cool stuff even if it means breaking things. So if you've enjoyed this, make sure to check out my other videos on this channel. Lord knows I could use the views. Also consider checking out my store page at curtishold.online forward slash store where I've got a bunch of other resources and tools. Maybe check out the buy gen add-on, it's a free add-on I've made to help with generative modeling and stuff. It might be actually really cool combining some of those techniques with lighting techniques like this. There's a lot of room for exploration there. I've got a bunch of material packs, including a free one, the community material pack. And more will be added to that over time. And if you like my work, consider signing up to my Patreon. We can get your name put permanently on this evolving piece of artwork called the Hall of Patrons. So yeah, and if you made it this far, the emoji for this video is going to be a lightning bolt. So put that down in the comments so I know who made it this far. So yes, have a fantastic day everyone, stay safe, and I will see you next time.